Hey, it's Rob Jigula. We're at a busy campsite at Yuru Safari Lodge in Zimbabwe. Chirundu Safari Lodge is on the Zambezi River just outside the border town of Chirundu in Zimbabwe and it's a straight shot from Marare along the A1 highway. Getting to the final road to the campsite is all tarred road. However, once you turn off that, that's a dirt road. In the rainy season like we are now, it's a bit muddy. You need a little bit of clearance. We've seen all kinds of vehicles though going up and down that road. So no type of special vehicle required once you get onto the site itself. Again, because it's the rainy season, there are some small ruts in the road, so a bit of clearance is required. Otherwise, no really special vehicle required to get here. You can easily get here with a trailer or for a trailer or otherwise. A caravan, I think, would be very difficult and there isn't that much space to fit a caravan. You could probably fit one caravan easily on the site. However, the road's not ideal for it and the actual approach to the campsite is very narrow and you've got to reverse out along that narrow approach as well. So not ideal for a caravan. There is a set of caravan plugs just on the bottom of the stairs that lead up to the site. I'm actually not sure what those are for, but that would mean that you need to park your caravan on the main road that leads down to the other campsite, so that wouldn't work either. So definitely not a caravan site. If you come with a boat, which we've seen a few other guests doing, then you can bring your boat in on its trailer and you can park it at the jetty that's just adjacent to the campsites. There's electricity on the site and there is also lighting on the site. Now, the electricity, the bulb electricity sockets are square sockets, so square pins, and so you've got to have an adapter for that if you're coming from outside of the country with a different type of plug setup. Electricity supply is from the national grid, and that does go out from time to time, so there are outages on the national grid, especially in the time that we've been here. We haven't experienced that at the site, however, on the day that we got here, there was a fault in the electricity supply to the town. So I don't think that was really a national problem, it was more of a local problem. So there is electricity on the site and there is also lighting. There is water as well, however, that water is not potable at all. You can request water and they will bring you water in a container from the main lodge, which is typically a 25 litre can. That's quite nice because the water comes from a cold room, so it's nice and cool when you get it. Ablutions wise, you have an exclusive bathroom for your campsite. That consists of a shower, a flush toilet, as well as a basin. There's hot water in the bathroom as well, and that is supplied by Solar Giza, so that works pretty well. The bathrooms do have a type of roofing over them. It's not really a proper roof. It's more uh, wooden poles. So if it does rain, then rain will go into the bathroom. So if you leave stuff in the bathroom, like clothing, etc., that will get wet. So it's a semi-open air bathroom. There's also a wash station, so you can do your dishes and stuff over there. And it has a nice little dish rack as well. There's a nice built bry stand set up. It's a concrete facility. It's got a bry and it's also got a surface on which you can prepare your stuff. So basically a bry table, if you can call it that. There's a nice fire pit as well. And the guys do bring down wood every single day for you to build your fire. So that's actually pretty cool to have. Of course, it's 40 something degrees here in the daytime. And at night it's in the 30s. So the fire is really for, let's call it aesthetic camping purposes. It's also really nice at this campsite. There's a guy or two on site and he comes down and washes your dishes and takes care of your fire pit and the general campsite. So that's really nice. There's a couple of added services that you normally wouldn't get at a campsite. The campsite is grassed. It does have lawn, which I like. I like campsites with lawn. It kind of gives it a nice green gardeny feeling, which is cool. And you can, of course, then walk around with your shoes off, for example, with caution. Of course, we are in the bush. Campsite size wise. Now there's a road leading into the campsite. And then there's an area where you can sit and stuff. So you can only really put up your tents on the road portion leading into the campsite, right? which is part of the campsite as well. And we've easily fit our tent here with all its glory and etc etc and that's worked out pretty well the first night we camped in our rooftop tent so and that's quite nice it's under shade so you can park the car and you can put your rooftop tent up no issues with that there's a big tree on our site that's fallen over so we haven't had the benefit of that shade over the tent which you would normally have we could have put the tent elsewhere as well but we wanted to put it on the grass 
The other campsites have really good shade. They're shaded all around. So there is good shade. I think we're just unfortunate that on our campsite, the big tree that would have given shade to the tent area has fallen down and you know that's what that is but otherwise it's a relatively large campsite i don't know how many vehicles or people are allowed on the campsite i would estimate that you could easily fit about four tents here and then a couple of vehicles you could park in the driveway into the campsite without disturbing any traffic purchasables there isn't a shop per se at the campsite but obviously there's a lodge on the property so you can get drinks from there, you can get food from there, you can order ice from there. They do bring wood to the site, they do bring water as well to the site. The town of Chirundu is very close by, it's literally a 5 to 10 minute drive. So you can get fuel, no issues with that. You can also go into the little town. It is a really small town and there are some small shops and supermarkets and bottle stores and that sort of stuff. So you can get basics like drinks and so on from there. The lodge is not very close to the campsite, it's the same property, but you do have to drive to get there. That's nice because then you still have the privacy of the campsites very much separated from the lodge. However, it's not a quick walk to the lodge, you have to drive there. The neighboring campsites are fairly close by, in fact they're almost adjacent to each other, they're separated by the bathrooms. So there's two sets of exclusive bathrooms, one for the one campsite and one for the campsite adjacent to it. There's nobody here while we are camping, so we basically have this whole area to ourselves. There's a couple of people camping down, we're at campsite one, there's a couple of people camping down at campsite four and five and we haven't heard them at all. I think every two campsites are close and adjacent to each other, but you can't see each other. You have to drive on the main road to get to the other campsite, so there is no real direct interaction or need for interaction with the other campsite. So it's pretty private from that point of view. Gate times. There are no gates, this is an unfenced campsite. However, of course, you've got to make arrangements with the management. We got in just after dark, no issues with that. We drove straight to the lodge and somebody showed us to our campsite. But of course, I think you've got to make those arrangements. There was a guy waiting for us when we got here, set up our fire, etc., which is very nice. So yeah, there aren't you know, specific uh, gate times as far as we can tell, but you must make sensible arrangements with the management. How to book this website with contact details. We did it via email, which we got from the website, of course, and I put that email address below as well as some contact numbers. Finding the site is a bit of a challenge because on the main road, there is no sign saying this is the way to the lodge and it's a dirt road, so it's not obvious. Now we came in at night and we didn't really get directions or instructions and emails and all that on how to get to the lodge and it's not properly located in Google Maps. It is in maps me, however. Long story short, after a couple of phone calls and sort of vague directions because it was at night and so on as well, we eventually found our way here. So I've also put GPS coordinates below for the turn off and GPS coordinates for the lodge itself. So there's a guy on the site and he's been really fantastic. He's come down, cleaned our fire pits every morning. He's also done our dishes, which we weren't expecting, which is great. He's kept the campsite in very good condition, very clean, very tidy. He cleans out the bathrooms and everything else and he does it every day like clockwork. So that's worked out really nicely. Most stuff on the campsite does work, the ablutions, etc. However, we have had electricity issues. So when we arrived, our camp light wasn't working. That took a couple of days to get fixed. It took two days. It was fixed on the third day, which is our last day here, or our, our last night here, the third night. Um, and the light switches as well were a bit problematic. Other than that, the campsite is pretty good. I don't think any complaints about the general facilities, but it did take a while to get the lighting sorted out. This is also a wilderness area, so it may not be safe to walk. We have seen hippos, for example, outside in the daytime, surprisingly, and there are crocodiles and all that sort of stuff. We're on the Zambezi River. I think the crocs are less of an issue but they are hippos, so probably not advisable to walk at night especially. We've also heard hyena at night, so there may be a hyena in the area. There are of course signs warning that you're in a wilderness area with wildlife roaming freely. Important things to note, we're right on the Zambezi River, which is really nice. We are literally on the edge of the Zambezi River here behind. And we're also in an unfenced, I'm gonna call this a semi-wilderness type camp. It's not a wilderness 
camp at all. So there are wild animals, hippos, crocs and that sort of thing. So you've got to be sensible at night. We've had no issues in the campsite at all. The campsite is also on fairly high ground as well. So we've, we've had no issues at all with animals. This is a tropical area. It is hot, it is humid, and so there are a number of bugs as well. Because it's a camp light, most of the bugs will be attracted to the camp light, so they don't really tend to disturb you a lot. If you're sitting around the fire and that sort of thing in the evening, the daytime, of course, it's fine. However, if you have a camp light of your own as well, that's nice and bright, then you can shine that somewhere else to attract the bugs to that area, which is what we typically do. So that works out, but yeah, it's tropical, it's hot, it's humid, there are lots of bugs. Important tip, make sure you switch off the bathroom light at night because if you don't, you're gonna have a lot of bugs in the shower. I think for us, what we've noted while on the site as well is that if we leave those lights off and then go to shower quite late in the evening, then there are definitely a lot less bugs. Activities, fishing, of course, we're on the Zambezi River. So you can charter a boat and they'll supply a skipper, of course, you can go out and do some tiger fishing or some bream fishing if you like. There's also a set of bream ponds just on the outside of the campsite. So that looks like a little flay that is on the other side of the campsite. It's, it's full, it's teeming with bream. So there's some nice fishing there as well if you don't want to go onto the main river. From the campsite, there isn't access to the main river to fish, to the Zambezi Channel. However, you can walk up to the jetty and you can spin or fish off there as well. Other than that, I believe there are safari rides available. We haven't taken advantage of that. Lots of birds, that's great. You wake up to the sound of birds, you have the sound of birds throughout the day, you go to sleep to the sound of birds. Absolutely wonderful. Sit in the campsite, tons of birds. Different bird species, different bird types, different bird sizes, different bird colors. It's absolutely fantastic from a birding point of view. So what type of camp is this for? I do think it's a nice campsite. I think it is a little bit rustic. Almost everything you require is here, so you don't need any special gear to come camp here. I think it'll work very well, even if you're a first time camper, because there's a lodge close by, and also there's a small town close by. You can't get major stuff in that small town, but you can get some basics. There is full cell phone signal, of course. We are, as the crow flies, a couple of kilometers from the town of Chirundu, so there is full cell phone signal. Note though, in terms of cell phone signal, there is cell phone signal from the Zimbabwe side and from the Zambia side. So there's a, a much larger Chirundu town on the Zambian side. So there's very good signal from the Zambian side of the river. And that's cell phone signal and data as well. So 4G, etc, etc. So quick recap, what is here? Electricity, yes. Lighting, yes. Water, yes, not potable. Water potable, supplied. Bright facility, yes. Flush toilet, yes. Bathroom, yes. Clean up station, yes. With the dish rack, yes. Fire pit, yes. Shade, yes. Lawn, yes. Dustbin, yes. A tap with water for use around the site, yes, not potable. What's not here? Air conditioning, <laughs> just joking of course. There is no card facility, so you can't pay by card. Once again, remember your dollars, cash is king, in Zimbabwe especially. So would I recommend Zambezi campsites at Chirundus Fire Lodge? Yes, I would. Quite like the campsite. I think it's very nicely set up. It's got all the stuff that you require, but it doesn't have potable water they bring for you. There's a great guy that comes around and does all the stuff for you, which for us is really a bit of a luxury. We don't typically expect people to come wash our plates and stuff when we're on a campsite. You get your laundry done at the lodge. You know, it's nice that there's a lodge by, it's close by, so you can get stuff from there and drinks and food, etc. If you want to, you can get on the river, get a boat. You can do all kinds of things. You can fish. There's a nice little bream pond over here. I caught a beautiful tiger fish as well. So it's great for tiger fishing. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice place. And would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it. Some easy campsites. Very much enjoyed it. So yeah, big positive for that. So if you found this informative, hit the like button. Also click on subscribe and subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Thanks to everyone that has subscribed. Really appreciate your support as always. Please leave a comment below if you do have any feedback or if you have any questions, I'll be glad to assist with some information where I can. If you enjoy the channel, if you want to leave a tip, absolutely 100% voluntary, you can leave a tip below. There is a link to buy me a coffee. And until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, have a great time. <laughs>